Like most adolescents, Demetrius was interested in sex, indeed more interested than most, in part because his good looks and family wealth gave him more opportunities. Crassus was not a banker in the way that later men would understand the word. But Crassus did not need to have the skills of future tycoons to be ahead of his time. In order to exercise power through money, he needed only to keep the pieces of the future a little more connected than did his peers. Even when camped beside the Euphrates, far from his home, he was still a sophisticated banker for his time, a lender to a deep pool of dependent supporters. The myth that's come to surround Cleopatra has been woven over the armature of the dates and facts that can be proven. We know that she was the last ruler who belonged to the Ptolemaic dynasty established in the wake of Alexander the Great's conquest of Egypt. We know who her father was, the names of her siblings, though there is some disagreement about how many she had. We know that three and quite likely four of her siblings died violent deaths. We know she was highly educated and multilingual. We know, or at least we are reasonably certain, that she grew up in the vast complex of the royal palace at Alexandria. We know what year she ascended the Egyptian throne. We know that she waged a bitter civil war against a younger brother, who was also her co-regent and spouse, a conflict that she won with the help of Julius Caesar, her lover, and the father of her oldest son. We know she died in 30 BC, a suicide. We know that in the immediate aftermath of her death, a Roman leader, Octavian, annexed Egypt, an outcome that Cleopatra had struggled to prevent during much of her reign. That's what we know.